What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this is my spoiler fee review for Jordan Peele's Nope. Nope is Jordan Peele's third horror film or third feature film i guess i'll say because i would describe this more as like a science fiction thriller but it, i guess you still put it in the horror genre directed by jordan peele written by jordan peele starring daniel kalua kiki palmer and steven young and a few others uh the other character or the other actor i was going to mention was the character play who played or the actor who plays angel torres because he's pretty involved in the narrative brandon Perea. so this movie follows the Haywood siblings who we have been talking about so much on my channel with the theory videos and all these other speculation videos I've done uh, but it, the premise for the movie is after random objects falling from the sky results in death of their father ranch owning siblings ranch owning siblings OJ and Emerald Haywood attempt to capture video evidence of an unidentified flying object with the help of tech salesman Angel Torres and documentarian Antlers Holst. Now, also, Antlers Holst, I guess I'll say who who is portraying that guy, because he is pretty involved in the third act, is Michael Wincock, who is amazing in the role as well. So, when it comes to Nope, I will say this is definitely Jordan Peele's Jaws. I was like, when the reactions came out last night, I was honestly confused by what people were talking about. But after seeing the movie myself, uh, I understand what they meant and the whole Spielberg comparisons. Honestly, there's a lot in this movie that just feels like a love letter to Spielberg. I can see the comparisons people are making with Shia Milan. And I would say after seeing this movie, he's three for three with me. But I can also see where some people would argue this might be his weakest only because, yes, at times the narrative was unfocused or maybe even too vague with its point. I can see a lot of people come out coming out of the movie and be like, well, what was the point of that? Although the screenplay is still very layered and it wants to address the exploitation of animals more than anything, I would say seeking fame and attention it has Hollywood commentary, etc. Because, you know, the Haywoods are actually involved in Hollywood, have a Hollywood connection. Their horses are used for Hollywood productions. The most the only thing we really see is them working on a commercial for the most part, as shown in the trailer during this movie. The dialogue in the movie is certainly designed, I would say, for certain members of the audience to chuckle. I can see I, I would honestly say that some of that dialogue I'm thinking about is mostly pointed towards the press members or those of you who are in, who are in the journalism field. You might understand and laugh at that aspect more of uh, certain bits of dialogue there. Peel again set out to deliver what he called a spectacle, and I'd say he did a terrific job more than delivered. The cinematography is breathtaking, and the shots are done in ways that legitimately just make the sky terrifying, and, I, and it just gives you a constant feeling of unease throughout the movie. Now, I will say this. To make to make it probably a little bit more sensible for people consider what spielberg did for the water with jaws peel has somehow managed to do that with the sky in nope i don't know how jordan peel did that but he did the sky is completely terrifying in this movie and i'm not saying that it's going to give you nightmares or anything like that like it's completely overly nightmare fueled but he does the same thing with the sky that spielberg managed to do to water with jaws and i'm not trying to say that it's better than jaws or anything like that but you'll get it once you see the movie Kaluuya and Palmer are a real joy to have on the screen. I would say Kaluuya is more resolved in this, in this, more reserved in this role. We know he's reuniting with Peel after doing Get Out together as well. He's more reserved in the role due to the nature of OJ and the inner struggles inside the character after the death of the, his father and his uh, lack of passion as it pertains to, I guess, some of the things going on with the ranch and their current state of affairs. Kaluuya again delivers a brilliant performance as OJ, but Palmer is really getting to shine as Emerald because she's more laid back and more open than OJ. She's also the light as opposed to OJ's darkness, honestly, when they're on screen together. So there's that balance that they share. There's this balance that the siblings bond, the siblings bring to keep the progressions of that bond compelling, even if the relationship between them wasn't explored the way I hoped it would be. Uh, they certainly are still the emotional hook of the story and the performances have me invested completely. It also adds that extra layer of emotional weight that comes between them in the finale. You'll see what I mean when you see the movie. Uh, and again, while the side characters like AJ, for example, they're all likable, they're still under they're still underwhelming when considering how involved AJ was with the events that unfold. He's pretty under underwhelming as a character. Most we learned about him was that he's good with his installation and recently went through a breakup. He's really a nothing character. Stevie Young Jupe, who runs Jupiter's claim that attraction is the most intriguing character due to the connection Jupe shares with the occurrences happening around the Haywood Ranch. The film doesn't spend a lot of time with him, but the time he's on screen is helping piece the puzzle help helping to piece together the puzzle 
as it pertains to the UFO. Now, admittedly, the film does foreshadow and reveal what's happening during the opening sequence, I'd say, but most audience members won't catch on due to how misleading the trailers were. The UFO is in the film and otherworldly activity is going on, but trust me, you, you're not prepared for this. You, you're not. <laughs> Sometimes the screenplay, again, does feel unfocused and incoherent, but I believe the second and third act will fix that. The sound design in this movie is almost its own character, acting as another tool that amplifies and reinforces the tension built throughout the movie. Peel again definitely enjoys taking Taking audiences on a slow but steady unnerving experience nope genuinely has some terrifying moments and i'm not saying again that it's nightmare field or anything it's more so the questions surrounding the strange occurrences combined with the film's pacing and the score that sets this unease that gets comfortable during the second act and completely consumes you during the third act colonia and palmer again are crushing it in their roles but all the performances i would say but despite the characters being underwhelming, the side characters, they were great for the most part. Every performance was. The themes of exploitation, chasing fame, and all that, again, is addressed. It just has a lot more to say about our treatment of animals, I would say, more than anything. While also sprinkling in the stuff related to spectacleizing blacks, etc. Now, the movie isn't beating you over the head with a race narrative so i know a lot of people might find that refreshing from some like peel deniers out there who are not a fan of his movies again the pacing is another highlight sure i'll say the first act is a little slow and you might only be engaged because of who is on your screen but peel doesn't forget to reel you in early on with a bizarre opening like he's done in his previous movies then we spend time with the characters before the second act starts to pick things up and then we lead to this highly thrilling third act that serves as again as a giant love letter i would say to jaws in my eyes it really just is jaws i'm sitting there watching the third act genuinely going that's chief brody that's quinn and so on and so forth so if anything it's a brilliant example of why jaws doesn't need a remake when you have original ideas like this being done that still remind you of a movie like jaws why without being a complete carbon copy of it so this is definitely pill's most ambitious project and i can see it being his most divisive as well i enjoyed nope uh i enjoyed all the technical aspects of it i just think the script could have been slightly better uh, i'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of ten i put it right next to get out and us is last but if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications you never miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video